Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you really where these equations come from. So this deals with circular motion and centripetal acceleration. So in circular motion, we have three, these three things connecting uh, rotational and linear properties. And this is the definition of centripetal acceleration. So I'm going to get into that first. I mean, second, let me get into these things first uh, because we'll use those to find that. And then I'll talk about centripetal. Okay, here I have a circle. And this has a circle of radius r. And what if I wanted to go all the way around the outer perimeter of that? What would be, if that is a length r, then what's that distance? Well, we know that that's the circumference. And the circumference of the circle is 2 pi times r. And really, that's, that's the definition of pi, right? Pi is defined as the ratio of the uh, diameter. It's 2 pi, 2r is the diameter. It's the diameter to the circumference, right? Pi equals d over c. No, c over d. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so you could try that. You could take some things like a circle and you can measure the circumference and the diameter and see that it doesn't matter how big the circle is, that's true. That's the definition of pi. But what if I just go halfway around? What if I go from here to here? Then how far is that? Well, that's halfway around the circle. So in that case, I could say that angle theta, uh, or I could call it, let's just say d theta, delta theta. Delta theta is half of a full circle, okay, so that would be not 2 pi radians. If you go all the way around a circle, that's 2 pi radians, so this is only halfway, so it would be pi, and then how far is that, right? That would give me a distance of half a circumference, so pi r. And you, you can see, what if I wanted to call this distance, I could do any distance, right? I could call this distance delta theta, and what would this distance here be? I'll call that s. I guess I should call that delta s. Well, if delta theta over the total of 2 pi, right, that's the change around the whole thing, is going to be equal to delta s over the whole circumference, which is going to be uh, 2 pi r. So from this, I can solve for delta s. And the 2 pi's cancel, and I get delta s equals pi delta theta. That's this, right? Because now if I had to say any distance s is going to be any uh, the angle that it subtends times pi. And this is the definition of an arc length. OK, now what if I let some object move along that path and it takes some time interval delta t? Well, then I can say delta s over delta t equals pi times delta theta over delta t. I can call delta s over delta t the velocity, not the vector velocity. We'll get into that in a little bit. The, mag the, the magnitude of the velocity. And then this is going to be equal to pi times omega, where we define omega as the angular velocity, the change in theta with respect to time. Now, this works if omega is in radians per second. If omega is not in radians per second, then this does not work. I'm sorry. R omega. Delta theta. What the heck? I went. <laughs> I should start over, shouldn't I? I'm not gonna. I'm sticking through it. So, yeah, the, the two pi is canceled. So this is delta S is R delta theta. Delta S over. I was so excited to work to the next thing. That's my problem. R delta theta. So V is R omega. And that only works if omega is in radians per second. But so now I have that one, and I have that one. See, it's OK. I'm, I said the right thing up here, right? So that's OK. Now what about this? What if I have an object that's moving around in a circle, and uh, it's speeding up, but it's staying in a path, right? In that case, its angular velocity would also be increasing. So I can define the angular velocity as the change in angular velocity over the angular, angular time. Uh, and so from that, I can get, uh, if I just take omega, delta omega divided by t, then I get delta r delta v. I, if I get, I'm sorry, if I take the, if I divide both sides, I'm just not doing well today. And that's, I apologize. Then I get delta v delta theta, I get 
A equals R alpha, where alpha is in also radians per second squared. If you have a problem that's not in angular velocity of radians per second and not have an angular acceleration of radians per second squared, you need to convert unit first. Okay, but then we have that. This one's the most important one that we're gonna use uh, this idea right here. But this gives you a relationship between linear quantities for an object moving in a circle and its angular quantities. Why would you ever wanna do that? Well, imagine that I have this rotating disc like this. Um, and I have two points on there. And they're, they're definitely moving at different velocities, but they have the same angular velocity. So it can be useful sometimes to switch over in terms of angular velocity and describe the problem in terms of angular velocity. Okay, but now what about angular, the centripetal acceleration? Let me go ahead and say this. I can break this into two pieces, centra and pedal. This literally means center pointing. This is the center pointing acceleration, okay? And I'll show you why in just a second. Be careful. There is another word, centrifugal, center fleeing, okay? And I have a video that tells you the difference between these two, but today I'm only gonna look at centripetal acceleration and I'll link the one to the, the difference between these two down below. So you can go down there and click that. Okay, so let's start with the definition. Let's start again with the uh, definition of, of acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Uh, if, if that's true, okay, um, that gives you the average acceleration. And if delta t is very small, it gives a good approximation too. So I'm not going to use calculus here. I'm just going to do uh, a rough estimation of that equation. But that's my definition of acceleration. And acceleration is a vector and velocity is a vector. That means that the direction does indeed matter. So let's go back to a circle. Of radius r. And so here is my object. Let's say it's rotating uh, this way. With some angular velocity omega. And so here's the velocity vector. And a little bit later, it's right there, and here's the velocity vector. I'm trying to make it the same length. So V1, the magnitude of V1 and the magnitude of V2 are the same. It's moving at a constant velocity, but the velocity vector, it's a constant speed, but the velocity vector is changing, right? Because it's changing directions. So here, let me just say the magnitude of V1 is equal to the magnitude of V2. But I can find the acceleration. If I say the acceleration at is the change in velocity or the change in time, so it's gonna be V2, the final velocity, minus initial velocity divided by delta T. So I need to find this delta V, right? Because the direction of delta V tells me the direction of the acceleration. So I'm gonna go over here and draw these two vectors. So here's, that one probably should be straight up. Tangent to the curve. There's V1 and there's V2. So if I do V2 minus V1, it's going to be a vector from the end of V1 to the end of V2, and that's delta V. So you'll notice that this acceleration vector in between here is pointing this way, delta V, towards the center of the circle. And it may be a little bit off because I used just a large time interval, but as you let this delta t get smaller and smaller and these get closer and closer together, there's still a change in velocity and it's always pointed toward the center. So if an object is moving in a circle, the direction of the acceleration is toward the center of the circle. That's the center pointing part of centripetal acceleration. But what's the magnitude? What's the magnitude of that acceleration? So let's redraw these. Let's say this is a, some angle delta theta, right? It covered some angle delta theta. I can redraw these two vectors. I'm gonna redraw them uh, bigger just so it makes it easier to see. Here's V1. And then I'm gonna use a very small angle. And there's V2. And that's delta theta. So 
what's the length right here? If that's a circle, then what's that length? Well, I can use that same idea, s equals r theta, right? We're talking about uh, not s, but we are dealing with vectors. And we can treat these as two vectors of magnitude um, r and a delta theta up here. I mean, a delta v up here. And this is like the arc length, where now we have the velocity, the radius of the circle is v, the magnitude of the velocity. So that means that I can write this just like s equals r theta for a distance circle. I can say uh, delta v equals v delta theta. That's the length of this piece up here. So now I want to find the acceleration. The magnitude of the acceleration is going to be the magnitude of delta v divided by delta t. So that is my magnitude of delta v. So I can write that as, I'm just going to write this as v. Okay. So this, this is a true as delta theta gets really small. Uh, with a big delta theta, it doesn't really work because imagine if I had this as my delta theta. This is my arc length but this would be my delta v, so it doesn't really work. But if delta theta is very small, it does work. So for delta v, I can just put in up here, v delta theta. I'm going to write that as a scalar divided by delta t. And then delta theta divided by delta t is omega. So I get v omega. And that's the magnitude of the acceleration. Now I'm going to use my definition of omega, omega uh, from over here. Omega is v over r. So omega is v over r. If I put that in up here, I get the magnitude of the acceleration is v times v over r equals v squared over r. Okay, now I could substitute in the definition of, of v. v equals omega times r. If I put that in up there, I get the magnitude of the acceleration is omega r times omega equals r omega squared. So those are two definitions of the centripetal acceleration uh, based on just drawing things in a circle. And there you go.